some presentations today, and I think it would probably be easier instead of me trying to flip from my computer back and forth. So I first feel like I need to almost apologize because we all were getting documents even this morning, but then at the same time I want to brag on lots of different people who put together lots of information, and you have done lots of work since the last state board meeting. So, again, the West Ed staff, you know, and they're from all over. They're from California, Boston, D.C. They've been doing lots of work. The OCSS team, you've got Sheila and Brent in the back. You've got Donna up here, and then you've got Cindy from the fiscal office. Lots of work going on. The legal team has been doing lots of work even over the Thanksgiving break. As late as 40 minutes ago, we were getting slides for this morning's presentation, just trying to get the most updated information, especially on the stakeholder feedback groups that have occurred in the last week and a half to two weeks. So lots of information. So those of you who are here in person, I did give you a folder with two of the documents that were emailed out today. One is a document that those of you who are at home working, I numbered the document number one. You had four documents, and I numbered each of them. Document number one would be the one if you were going to print one. That would be the one to print. And it's just kind of a working document for you guys today on decision points that have to be made. All right? Document number two was a document that you received over the weekend. At the last state board meeting, you had lots of different requests on information that you would like to have. And so what we tried to do, and again, there were lots of different people who pulled information together to make this document. That was kind of a one-stop shop place trying to answer a lot of those questions. I know someone had requested national research articles, so we had embedded some of those in here. Ms. Farina went through and looked at the history of annexations and consolidations within the state. That was embedded in here. And then we just tried to pull additional information. One that was added this morning that was not in your information, and so the newer one has it, is the numbers for school choice from the Alzheimer District. So that was added in here, and we did update some of the assessment numbers. This document will be posted on the state board agenda that's being posted today for everyone to have access to, but you do have the most updated one that was emailed all to you this morning. Document number three are the slides that you do not have access to on the finance that Mr. Willis is going to present in a second. And then document number four is the comprehensive stakeholder feedback document. And Felicia, in a second, has already pulled out the high points of that document, and she'll do those in a presentation here in just a second. But you then have the comprehensive, all the information in a document for you to read later on. So bragging on lots of different people have done lots of good work. So, Dan, if you could pull up that presentation. So what we're going to do real quick is quickly go through two points of information that you requested on today's working session. One of those is you wanted to hear what the stakeholder feedback was for round two. So Felicia is going to go over that. And then the second request that you guys requested at the last meeting was what is the financial status if Dollar Way were to go back as a local control district or under reconstitution? What would their finances look like? And Jason did a projection on that, and he'll go over those with you. Okay? So we'll start there. So let's see. Let me turn this on. So I'm going to go ahead and Felicia, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is Felicia, and Felicia's in Boston, I believe, correct? Is that right? Close by. Okay. Yep. All right, so I'm going to let Felicia take over and talk about stakeholder engagement, round two. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you can hear me okay, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to share the results of phase two of our stakeholder outreach. In phase two, we shifted from uh, the approach in phase one where we asked folks to share more about their vision, their broad scale um, uh, likes and dislikes about the district, um, sort of big picture questions. And then in phase two, what we did was share exactly what we presented to you back in November, uh, those scenarios in much more detail for their uh, 
the, for a chance for them to interact. We did so in three ways. Um, we asked for folks to join us in open community feedback forums. We scheduled five of those sessions between uh, the 20th of November and the, 20, and the 24th. Um, so that was a Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, they, are, they were open to all with or without registration. We had, did have 21 that did register. Each registrant got a reminder email as soon as they registered and each participant got a thank you email. So some people received up to three or four even emails. Um, and it was an opportunity for the participants to hear about what the scenarios were and respond to them one by one. Um, we had 27 unique participants. We did have a few folks who joined multiple times um, to share their opinions. And we had eight of those 27 complete an experience survey, which I'll share the results of in just a moment here. Um, we also had the opportunity for folks to participate in a feedback survey. This was an online sort of at your own pace feedback survey that asked the same questions that uh, we asked in the forum. So they had an opportunity to review a video about the scenarios and, uh, and had a written explanation of what the details of each scenario could be, explaining that no decisions had been made and this was just for their uh, reaction. And we had 12 unique participants participate in that. That was open from November 15th through the 29th. Um, and we, so we closed it just two days ago and we had it, most, the average time it took for the participants was 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, so we were right on with the, the number of questions and we, we warned people it would take about 15 minutes. And we asked participants to identify what role they were in and whether they lived within the Dollarway district boundaries or not. Um, again, we asked each, uh, each participant a number of aspects of each scenario, whether it would be uh, positive or negative for the community in different, in different ways. And we'll, we'll be able to share that data with you as well. And then finally, we had an open comment period, which is still open. Uh, so for those of you listening who are not on the board, we would love an additional, any additional open comment that we can gather. Um, that'll be open until December 8th. We had one participant um, who submitted open comment and that is submitted in your packet as well for your consideration. And I will say before we move on to results that all the opportunities, all three opportunities were advertised in a number of ways. It was on the Dollar Way School District website. It was on the uh, Department of Education website. A flyer went home with every in-school participant in Dollarway schools uh, to their parents. We had, um, there was an article in the Pine Bluff commercial that covered all three of these options. We reached out to 110 individuals via email who participated in the last round or whose email we had gotten uh, from a variety of places. It was posted on a, on a Facebook group and uh, of alumni, and we were able to ask all the participants in the discussions and in the follow-up email to sort of tell their friends and gather those um, other folks who might want to uh, participate as well. So that is what we did, and here were the results. Um, so while we know that the participation was fairly low, we still believe that there's a lot of value in what was presented. And a lot of it was different than what we heard in the first round. Stacy, can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So we'll start with the community feedback forums. Again, there were 27 total participants. And Oh, it seems that something funky has happened with my formatting. Uh, but that big blue space is community members and alumni who identified um, as being some, some connection to Dollar Way, but not necessarily a current uh, educator or student or parent in the district. So 
They were sort of outside of the district and may in fact be, uh, most in fact, probably were not living in the district. Um, so difference of, of perspective there, um, but just so you know, that was about 63%. We had 22% that did not participate verbally, so you will not see their feedback uh, included in the results that we'll go through in just a moment. We had one parent um, who identified as just a parent, and we had a few educators who um, came from both Pine Bluff and Dollar Way School Districts. Next slide, please. Okay, so given those diverse groups, which were very different than what we ex than what we had in the first round, we did get some some different data. Um, these are the top five uh, most frequent sentiments. And if you look in your packets, you'll see some quotes that support each of these. So if you're interested in that, please go, go ahead and, and take a look. 86% um, of the participants were, and this is similar to the phase one, were um, in strong, a strong proponent of Dollar Way remaining its own school district. Um, with its own name and its own identity. They were very conscientious of the Dollar Way School District as, its, uh, as a cultural entity. Um, so we did have that, um, which was common to the first set. Uh, additionally, 71% of the participants were in favor of incentive funds. So when we talked about the, the funds that would come along with annexation or consolidation, 71% of the participants said, yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. That would be nice to have. Uh, but very few of those participants actually provided specific feedback on what they would do with that money or what could advance because there was additional funds. Um, however, the participants that were, uh, that identified as educators, almost 100% of them, so 14% of the total, uh, did provide further feedback on potential benefits of, of both annexation consolidation and that, those additional funds. You can see some of those examples in the quotes. Uh, next, we had 62% of participants expressing uh, concern about the current district leadership. And the sentiment was the current leadership, which included the, the superintendent and the state, um, has had five years to uh, to make improvements and they haven't done that successfully. So interestingly, this was a very different sentiment that we heard in the first round, which was much more of a close knit community to Dollar Way schools right now. Um, many of the folks who we heard from were connected to Dollar Way many, many years ago and had this, this opinion um, 62% of them had this opinion that because the current district leadership did not show progress in the last five years, that they should not remain in place. Um, so, so differing from that close knit um, to the teachers and parents and students who were currently in the Dollar Way School District and felt very strongly that the current leadership should remain in place. Uh, Additionally, on that one, 52% of participants were concerned about the combination of Dollar Way and Pine Bluff, saying that both districts are struggling. So what would, help, what would be the helpful part of bringing both of them together? Um, and there was a concern over the sort of um, compounding effects of both of their struggles. 42% of participants expressed that they wanted to see plans that addressed student services, academic needs, and financial needs, uh, rather than structural changes. And as we know, the decisions before the board today are mostly structural, and that's by law. Um, but it is interesting to note that 42% of the participants unprompted said, Hey, look, these are these are great scenarios, but none of them actually address the challenges that are before the district. And there were there was some skepticism that they would make significant change in the experience of students in the district.
And then finally, 38% of the participants were interested in reconstitution as a way to pursue those innovative options um, and to incorporate local input and more partnerships. So they, they expressed some interest in that. However, 42% of stakeholders uh, expressed a concern that even with that, that opportunity to be innovative and to partner, that coordination and improvement of student services might still be difficult. Uh, so, so there was a little bit of, yeah, we would love to do that, but a skepticism that it could come to fruition. In your packet following this page, which is on page four, you will see some questions that came up, a whole list of questions that came up from the stakeholders during the feedback forum. And we put these in there in their entirety because it does give a great sense of what people are thinking about, what they're concerned about, what their, um, what their first thought is. And you'll see questions in there such as, what, uh, when cuts are made, will it be elective courses? Will there be a redu reduction in teaching force? Um, what would happen to the name of the buildings? Who, if the buildings were consolidated, who gets to name them? Um, it, there were a number of questions and I would encourage you to peruse those as a thought process of what are the next steps here? What are the questions that we need to answer next once the initial decisions are made? Um, so what you're seeing now is the feedback survey, and we're on page seven for those of you who are following along in your packets, um, the feedback survey participants. So again, we, we offered that feedback survey, which asked similar questions to what we asked in the forum. We had 12 participants, and you'll see who participated. We had um, three, or I'm sorry, four that, that were identifying as community leaders or community members. And of those four, one of them did not live in the district. Uh, teachers and staff members, we had five participate. And of those five, four, again, did not live in the district and one did. And then finally, we had three parents that participated and one was just not sure whether they lived within the boundaries or not. Um, the, the second circle there that you'll see is about how many, we, we wanted to give a sense of how many people were overlapping between input opportunities and about a third, so about four of those said, yes, I will also participate in the discussions um, as well as filling out the feedback survey. So there may be some overlap in who was there, but being an anonymous survey, we don't actually know. Uh, next slide, please. So again, we tried to summarize the main points uh, that, that came across in that feedback survey, given the 12 participants. We had 50%, and, and these questions were much more specific in, they were sort of multiple choice questions, and you'll see this data uh, outlined very specifically in the next several pages of your packet. Uh, but here's some highlights. So 50% of participants believed that return to local control was desirable, while 50% said it's undesirable. Um, they had a scale from this is very desirable to this is not desirable at all for me and my family. And it was split half and half um, between uh, on the return to local control. And that was the highest positive rating, uh, but still 50-50. And on this one, we asked about whether a specific scenario would have a positive impact on various aspects of the community experience. And more participants than not uh, believed that the return to local control option would have a positive impact on the culture and atmosphere of Dollarway, the academic outcomes, the community and family connection to Dollarway and the momentum that Dollarway is making towards improvement. So more participants said, yes, I believe this will have a positive impact than those who said, uh, yes, other scenarios would have a positive impact. Um, and that data is a little bit complicated to explain in one blurb, so you might want to just check that out in the next couple of pages. More uh, 
and then on the opposite side, more participants found reconstitution, annexation, or consolidations undesirable than desirable. Um, so we had more than 50% say that those three options were not desirable for them and their families. And on the opposite side of that, negative impact would, uh, they, they believe that consolidation specifically would have a negative impact on cultural and atmosphere, academic and non-academic opportunities and momentum towards improvement. Uh, and then finally, on average, participants agreed to strongly agreed that they were able to share their perspective uh, via the survey or the um, or the feedback forums. They were the forums were well organized. They were able to understand the scenarios that were under consideration, and that they believe their input would have an impact on the board's decision. So uh, this is very consistent with our last uh, group of data. We asked very similar questions in phase one. And again, folks were saying, yes, this opportunity really did uh, feel like it was a, a, an opportunity to share my perspective and that it will matter. Um, so if you would like, you'll have, you have a bunch of data that gives specifics on uh, folks' responses to the different scenarios. You can peruse that. You also have every open-ended response. Um, it was so varied that there was just no way to consolidate it. So I gave it, gave it all to you for your uh, enjoyment. And then finally, at the very end, you have the one open comment submission. Um, that was the only option that was not um, anonymous. So there it is signed. I will stop there. That's all I was going to share today, but happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Felicia. Um, j just one note again. We did have, I just want to point out again, it was, was in the Pine Bluff commercial. It was emailed out. It was sent home in backpacks with students. It was put on the district website. We dedicated a web page to it on the ABE site. Um, the largest group that actively kind of participated in this stakeholder feedback group was an alumni group who kind of organized and I think that's where you saw a lot of that data was um, an alumni group um, and you kind of saw opposite um, kind of scenarios from that first round which was a lot of teachers um, so again very different groups um, and again still very low participation even with an effort to try to engage um, participation so um, I appreciate the, the work that they did over the holiday break trying to pull and again a lot of this information and, and documents um, were, were coming in late last night and early this morning and trying to get that into your hands as fast as possible and so we'll continue to collect information again we did um, open forms there's an act, actual survey link and then there's an open comments link where people can type in comments and the, the survey and the comments link will remain open all the way until state board and so we'll be continue to collect information and get that to you. Okay. Um, so Jason, um, and I believe Jason's our California, and, and he was actually supposed to be here in person again, but they denied his travel, and so he's going to Zoom with us, and he's going to talk about the budget considera considera considerations going back to local control. Um, so Jason, are you ready? Yeah, th thank you so much. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, sir. Great, thank you, uh, Stacy, and uh, good morning to uh, Commissioner Key and the, the board members. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you again today and uh, Felicia kicking us off with um, some of the stakeholder engagement uh, feedback that we've gotten on the, on the second round. So one of the other critical questions that came up uh, during the last uh, state board meeting towards the end uh, was, was really a question about what, were, what would happen uh, should Dollar Way continue um, on its current path returning to local control and particularly looking at this question from a financial standpoint. And so, uh, you know, hats off to other members of the WESTED team that supported uh, this analysis. Um, and this slide really lays out four of the key assumptions. Happy to unpack further assumptions that we made uh, in projecting this um, financial outlook to FY22, which is the next school year. Uh, first and foremost, that we assumed continued declining enrollment in the school district consistent with uh, previous year patterns. Um, it's approximately about a 5% less ADM from uh, FY21 to 22. 
funding is based on the prior year, um, but is consistent with um, that, uh, that reduction in ADM year over year, which results in um, a reduction in ADM uh, and funding associated that uses that figure uh, for, for revenue. So this includes uh, your foundation funding amount. Um, we also removed any uh, noticeable one-time revenue amounts uh, that would not be available to the district in FY22. Uh, on the expenditure side of the ledger, we assumed a 3% increase in labor uh, that was consistent with prior year patterns. Um, this is in particular associated with uh, increases in compensation, either salary or benefits um, overall for the district. We didn't look at uh, line by line detail, but um, really operated off of average year over year prior year patterns um, to look at those increases. We also assumed no uh, change in non-labor expenditures from the FY21 to 22 year. Uh, so go ahead to the next slide, please. Thanks. So this slide uh, shows you um, a trend of what the total revenue, total expenditures, uh, difference and ending balance uh, look like for Dollar Way School District from FY 2017 through FY 20, uh, which is the end of this most prior uh, fiscal year in Arkansas. Uh, we show the FY 21 budget. So these are the projected annual total revenues, total expenditures, the difference between those two figures, which is a negative 284,280, which continues to, to uh, buy down the ending balance that you can see has been steadily declining since FY 2017. So using the assumptions that we uh, just discussed, the FY22 projected revenue against total expenditures would result in uh, a net decrease in the funding balance of about $654,000 that if um, allowed to proceed would result um, at the end of the FY22 year, um, a negative just over half a million dollars uh, for Dollar Way School District, which is a negative 5% on total expenditures um, for that, that subsequent year. Uh, which, which clearly is not a viable solution for, for Dollar Way um, regarding both its fiscal solvency and health. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about some of the results and implications. So without any of those further expenditure adjustments, um, either you know, continuing to curtail uh, mild uh, increases in labor expenses, um, and or reducing other non-labor expenditures. As I mentioned, uh, Dollar would have a negative ending fund balance by the end of the FY22 year. The cash analysis that we ran on the revenue expenditures, um, accounts receivable and accounts payable into FY22 suggests that Dollar Way's fund balance would go negative approximately sometime in the early spring of 2022, um, thereby month over month uh, in paying uh, uh, contracts for for um, their positions would continue uh, to eat away at that balance up to that projected um, just over half a million dollars that I uh, had just mentioned on the previous slide. So in order to balance the budget and retain some marginal ending balance, which um, you know is equivalent to about $200,000, Dollar Way would have to initiate um, expenditure reduction plans all imminently, uh, basically next month. Uh, and introduce uh, reductions of approximately $700,000 on a projected $10.1 million budget or nearly a 7% reduction in ongoing expenses. So that would not include any of your one-time expenses that were made for uh, you know, technology upgrades or other um, one-time planned expenses for this year. Those would be um, ongoing annual expenses for, for Dollar Way. Um, I don't think it's an understatement to say that um, that's a really large cut in a single year to a district that is already um, struggling to ensure that it's providing its core instructional opportunities. Um, that reduction would, uh, if applied across the district, um, may result in two to three teachers per school building uh, being reduced um, in order to achieve that $700,000 in savings. Uh, as we presented our analysis um, at the last board meeting on November 13th, we don't see tremendous opportunities for achieving that level of savings at the central office level. I think some of that might be able to be achieved. Um, but I think I wanna return just in my closing comment um, to the notion that uh, allowed to move forward without any other intervention, uh, it seems like a very unviable um, 
position for dollar way to be in with a negative ending fund balance at the end of the, the FY 2022 uh, year. So I'll pause there and Stacey, I'll turn it back over to you uh, and happy to take any questions that the board might have on, on this, uh, these slides. Does anyone have any questions about the financial slides for uh, Mr. Willis or even for Cindy and Donna? And I know Mr. Rogers is around here somewhere listening as well. So if anybody had any questions about the finances. Um, I know that Cindy keeps up pretty close with what's going on at Dollar Way. Could you kind of tell us if, if that uh, mirrors what you have been figuring and looking at over the last few years with Dollar Way? Cindy Smith, Fiscal Services, they, they are on point with that. We have had a steady decline. And remember, a lot of this is due to the loss of students. So to make it a little more understandable what happens, when you lose students, you lose the foundation funding for those students. But then your remaining tax dollars stretch further between those students that remain, further reducing the foundation funding that you will get for those kids that remain. So it's almost like a double whammy. And then if your assessment goes up, that's a third piece. That money goes further, and then your money reduces again. Um, we were just looking at numbers, and we've already lost 20 kids at Dollar Way just this year. So um, now their, their money was coming in a little bit better on taxes, but still, we're going to be in that same situation. Are you projecting a negative balance by spring of 22 also, or is it? We would be pretty close to that, I would think, because we're projecting the end of this year to be about 152,000. Okay. And if you've lost 20 kids, you know, your, your money is going to be much less. And if you don't start reducing staff significantly, you are going to have that negative ending balance. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a, a question. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Smith. Yes, in the last meeting in November, we heard about the casino coming in. And are there any, um, do we think this is going to have any effect at all on our student enrollment or dollars coming into the district? Um, I think that the projections have been more um, of a positive projection for the Palm Bluff School District versus Dollar Way. Um, and even the tax revenue from it was really hitting Palm Bluff and not necessarily Dollar Way. So okay. as we're talking about our different options, you're going to see in an annexation or a consolidation of the two districts that, that you could have benefit them. Okay. Thank you. It wasn't, it wasn't very clear to me, so I appreciate that. Thank you. So moving forward, um, in your folders or email to you, document number one, what we tried to do um, was kind of lift everything up and pros and cons that we've, we've kind of discussed in different scenarios. Um, also tried to put the legal parameters on here. And then also we were asked at the last state board meeting to make it very clear what were the decision points that the State Board of Education had to make. And so on each of the, the, the doc, document number one, which you have is the, the red, the green, the yellow, and the orange pages. You have loose pages in your folders. And those of you um, on Zoom, it's document number one that was emailed to you. Um, the gray box on this document here that's grayed out, those are the decision points by the board. Okay. Everything else are factors that help you make a decision, but those are your decision points. Okay? So first with um, local control. If you look at the legal parameters for, for local control, and again, I would ask Ms. Farino and um, Ms. Alice Ford, if, there's, if I stray in any way, you're welcome to tackle me. Okay? Um, the legal parameters for local control. Um, one, the commissioner has to make a recommendation that the district has met criteria, and DESE has to certify in writing that the district has resolved indicators um, for their fiscal classification. 
Um, I can tell you that fit, under fiscal classification, DESI cannot certify in writing that they have met those due to the declining balance. Um, and um, the commissioner at this time is not making a recommendation to return to local control. Is that correct? So with that, has the district met the above criteria? If yes, they can be returned. If not, local control is not an option. And so because they've not missed fiscal classification and because the recommendation is not being made, local control is not an option. So that takes us to the other three options for the state board, which include reconstitution, annexation, and consolidation. So on reconstitution, which is the green heading. Again, what we've tried to do on this is pull out the pros and cons, and I'm gonna kind of highlight some for you now. Again, I want to, it's one of those, I wanna apologize and I wanna brag. I wanna brag that we've given you so much information, but I wanna apologize for anything that's in the incorrect place or misspelled or, or rushed, and as I'm going through it, I keep seeing things that I go, ooh. Um, and so I apologize for that. Like the word trend earlier, I think had it three ends in it or two ends. And, um, didn't see it until it's on the big screen, so we'll, we'll work through those. Um, so on reconstitution, the, uh, the state board does have the authority to reconstitute, and that would be a different form of governance. Um, the suggestion or scenario that's been made would be to um, merge the central offices of Pine Bluff and Dollarway. That was a recommendation that would be made. Um, there would be um, a decrease in expenditures, which would result in some cost savings. Um, a con for reconstitution is um, they do not have access to the consolidation or annexation funds that they would have available um, if you annexed or consolidated. So um, that three and a half million dollars over two years, they would not have access to. Um, so that's kind of a con for that. Um, while merging the two, central office is what we can tell you from this year since we kind of have done that this year we do have some fiscal savings with the superintendent and if they looked at continuing to do that we would look at other positions and shifting um, however there's still an inefficiency of serving two districts there's two budgets there's two federal report there's two there's two of everything um, to I mean I think we double hit miss some um, warrant up for signatures twice as much as any other superintendent because she has to sign for two different districts on everything. Um, and so there is a lack of um, efficiencies in that manner as far as organization of running two different districts. Um, the pros, um, it would remain as a separate district. Um, they would maintain their identity and mask on. That is something that we have heard about from the community. Um, it goes back to this idea of their own elected board. Um, the, again, a con for that, and one I think that has kind of been brought up even through the stakeholder feedback within the first round, there was um, those who expressed concern that the lack of qualified candidates stepping up and actually participating in a, state, in, in a board. Um, and we ourselves have struggled, again, trying to get participation and engagement um, on that forefront when we talk just to dollar way as standalone. So again, that is a, a, would be um, a con moving forward. Um, so that kind of talks about reconstitution. And again, th these are your disc sheets for you guys to look at and kind of look at the different ones. Let me move you to annexation so I can kind of pull up the high points for you on annexation that has the yellow at the top. And again, I want to, um, Lauren is on line with West Ed and Lauren again did a lot of work on this document with the team um, so Lauren at any time you want to step in or holler um, feel free to um, with annexation the proposal has been to consider the annexation with the Pine Bluff School District um, again both districts are under state authority so if you annexed Pine Bluff or dollar way with Pine Bluff it would resume under state authority um, so the commissioner could remain the um, appointed board um, Pine Bluff School District will remain under state authority or could potentially remain under state authority until 2023. Um, as far as millage rates for finance and operations, millage rates would remain the same in each of the districts. There would not be an adjustment unless there was a, a vote to adjust the millage rates. 
Um, Pine Bluff School District would receive approximately three and a half million dollars over the next two years for the annexation. Um, there would still need, and I want to say this under every scenario, there will probably most likely be some type of reduction in force at some point um, just to um, getting the budgets in line from where we are now with the deficit spending. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to pull out to you. Um, implication for stakeholders in the first round. Um, you know, we did hear many positive comments successfully from those that were currently in the district and had children in the district of um, Superintendent Warren. Um, so the continuity of having Superintendent Warren being able to be, again, the superintendent for a single district um, and both of them together and that continuity um, continuing. Um, also under annexation, the Dollar Way School campuses could remain open as long as they are financially viable. Um, and I know just as in discussions within um, the department, there would be no plans to close any of these buildings for next school year. Um, and then from future beyond that, it would be a local decision within the Pine Bluff School District to determine which buildings would remain open or which would be closed. But it, it, there's nothing that says that the campuses in Dollar Way have to close. And, and there are a lot of times people automatically think that has to happen, and so that, that does not. Um, there, there is the cost savings associated with the closure of campuses, so I want everybody to rec recognize that. So when you talk about significant to moderate to minimal cost savings, that comes in the packages of consolidating of campuses, reduction in force, um, and so those are decisions that would have to be made on a local level on how to get the budget in line. And Ms. Warren, in a little bit, I, I probably asked you to speak to some of that. So those kind of the high points on annexation. Consolidation is that fourth sheet with the orange bar at the top. So under consolidation, you'd be creating an entirely new district. Again, the proposal or recommendation that we are considering or asking you to consider is that with Palm Bluff. Um, the um, pros, again, would be moderate to significant cost savings. Um, the resulting district, again, would get the three and a half million annexation funds over the next two years. Um, what it does not guarantee is it does not guarantee that um, the superintendent leadership, because you would be creating a new district, you would also be setting forth a new board, and they would not remain under state control unless we brought the district back to you guys as a new district based on criteria that I'm not 100% sure what it would be yet. Um, could they be placed in level five? So those are some of those unclear factors if we were to start a new district. It would be very difficult to say, consolidate, brand new district, and all of a sudden they're in level five support with an appointed board. So most likely it would be an elected board. Okay. Hey, Stacey, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, under annexation, does the timeline start over for the districts? So under annexation, what would happen is um, it would be, it, since Dollar Way would be just being um, assumed by Pine Bluff, it would stay within the Pine Bluff timeline. Okay. Thank you. I'm getting head nods from my. Uh, so um, I'm just going to kind of pause there because I've given you a lot of information. Um, these these sh sheets really are just to kind of pull up the high points for you, um, let you kind of start processing some decision points. If you look at the decision points for, for you, it is which, which option would you choose and then how is the board established? So if you were looking at if, 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 the, if what feels comfortable to you is the commissioner remaining in authority, the only one for that is annexation. If what is comfortable for you um, is a brand new board, new district, that's consolidation. Um, if it's an appointed board, you could be looking at reconstitution or annexation. So on that last sheet, tried to put the bubbles in the, the west edge, we tried to take some of those points and align them to the different um, options for you. So again, this is a working session for you to kind of start processing this and asking questions. Stacy, this is Susan. C could I ask a question about um, if, 
if the department, do you yet have a recommendation that you're making to us? That's my first question. Or that's something that we'll come to a conclusion on as we go through the working session. Um, I think if we, if, if the, the, the recommendation I think that we would probably have at this time would be annexation. I feel like there's probably the most benefit to the district as far as the, the, the funding, the incentive funding. I also feel like the continuity of district leadership with Ms. Warren. Um, also feel like that the ability to keep the Dollarway campuses open right now without them losing their identity and the continued progress while they have not met all their exit criteria there has been significant progress made especially in the last three years um, i'm not going to say the first two progress wasn't made because you changed climate climate and culture i mean you did lots of work there um, and I, again i want to remind you that miss warren is here if you guys would like to hear from her the, uh, the second question I had that's related to that, uh, and it ties back to some of the verbatim comments we were talking about earlier. I know this is a little unusual because Pine Bluff is under state authority, but what um, point of view does that community uh, get to bring to bear on, which, uh, on these decisions, given the implications for them? So within the Pine Bluff community, you've had um, kind of two different organized groups who have been talking about um, the school districts in different manners. You've had Go Forward Palm Bluff, who just recently released a report that's kind of encouraging consolidation of actually several districts. Um, it goes well beyond um, what, what we're talking about today. Um, you know, again, Ms. Warren's here today. She could probably speak to some of that um, if you guys would like to hear from her. When it's appropriate, I'd sure like to hear how Pine Bluff feels about all this. I think we've heard some of it, but if an annexation is the direction that we're leaning in, I just yeah. want to make sure we understand the implications for them. And I know, so Ms. Warren has, I think, Ms. Warren, you've talked to your Pine Bluff administration and stakeholders, and you've talked to Dollarway folks. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you want to make some comments? Is that okay, Ms. Dean? Okay. Good morning, all. I really want to, to say, if I may, that I appreciate this opportunity to be here. And then, of course, to speak and share. Um, this is a very interesting time. And so I'll speak directly to what I've been asked. I, I did um, prepare my heart to share today. And so specific to the stakeholders, um, not only, as you saw with West Ed, did the opportunities uh, be presented for stakeholders to share, but I've also tried to make certain, I had conversations with the Dollarway leadership, uh, with the Dollarway staff via sharing the link and pushing that out, um, and actually had a conversation, like I say, with, with leadership. It's been the agenda for uh, Dollarway for the last few meetings, an agenda item in our monthly meetings. With the Pine Bluff School District, I felt that it was important to make certain that they were aware as well. So it hasn't been to that same degree, but uh, even with the most recent uh, actions, there was the letter, of course, uh, from Attorney Freno on behalf of the department. I shared when we received that information with the uh, Pine Bluff School District, I shared uh, exactly that they, they'd been named. And so, I'm sorry. I'll get you to come up here so you'd be on camera. Sure, I, I'd be happy to. So I shared with the Pine Bluff School District um, via taking opportunity to let them know that that letter had um, come to the district. And so I send out Monday messages to, to both districts every Monday, they're my uh, Monday focus message, and I shared that with them. And then in the recent information shared, uh, that's that round two, phase two with West Ed, I shared that information, of course, with, with both districts as well, and did ask for feedback, even from the Pine Bluff School District. I've had opportunity to discuss this with the cabinet level um, at the Pine Bluff School District, and we talked about a variety of things associated with it. So there, I believe, has been some opportunity for Pine Bluff as well. Uh, what I share with you right now is kind of anecdotal. I don't have a data set to refer to or an official survey. 
And so just as uh, Ms. Smith shared, Go Forward Pine Bluff has been a part of the conversation. And I'd be remiss not to say that it's really the NAACP and that Go Forward Pine Bluff um, helped to power the opportunity to get stakeholder feedback around what everybody's called consolidation. And um, a lot of education has taken place with how the department has rolled out these pieces to say these are the four options and this is what it means. But basically the community has been talking about consolidation as a concept. So a lot of education, again, has gone forward. What I would say, the district from an anecdotal standpoint, people felt that just my being placed there spoke to uh, possibilities. And as we've had conversations, I mean, we've been together a long time in that community, working as, the, um, as regional schools, the Arkansas River Education Service Cooperative, working together as superintendents, and working together as teachers who are, you know, elbow to elbow at professional development of activities. Um, there's no new, you know, how we do all that in that area. And so it hasn't, I would say it's not the strangest thing for Palm Bluff to consider. And it's, we tried to be as transparent as possible as early as we could be. Um, if I had to say how they feel, I'm not comfortable saying to you that. Um, I've, again, not surveyed, but I've heard from many people who have talked about the potential benefits of our coming together. And if I had to say to you there have been some negative comments made to me, there actually have not been. So that's what I'd share with you related to Palm Bluff School District's perspective. Yes, sir. Ms. Warren, thank you. And, uh you know, uh, thank you again for w being willing to take on this very unique role of superintendent of two districts, and, and I can't think of anybody better to have handled it. Uh, and I can't even imagine, you know, um, the the issue with COVID that we're all dealing with, and you know, having two separate districts and all. But but that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about or ask you about on from the community standpoint. In my conversations with the mayor, you know, Mayor Washington, and some of the other community leaders down there. One of the benefits is the fact that you know you have the Pine Bluff School District, Dollarway School District, but they exist. Obviously, Dollarway goes into rural Jefferson County, but much of it also exists within the footprint of the city of Pine Bluff, and for the purposes of city planning. Uh, the purposes of economic development and those types of things, things that as a department we don't really delve into, but what they have, what I've had communicated to me is that they see this as an opportunity uh, for uh, more efficient planning, more efficient community development, economic development, all those things that they're working so hard in the uh, Pine Bluff area uh, to be able to attract people to get people to stay in Pine Bluff, to, to attract new residents to come to Pine Bluff. So when we're thinking in this work session setting about uh, the, the pros and cons, talk to me a little bit about those conversations that you have had with, uh, with the, uh, the leaders, community leaders down there. Yes, sir. Um, there are a variety of stakeholders. And, and I should say to you that while the numbers for the number of stakeholders who are sharing um, definitely are not what we want them to be. There are so many dedicated people in the greater Pine Bluff area, in, the, uh, in both districts, and, and people who show up to, to love on both districts. And so, so sir, as you said, it is um, a common thought that when you have multiple school districts, you have multiple expenses. And even among social services, when you talked about the footprint I am serving from both district offices. I have days when I'm at District Dollarway, and I have days when I'm at District Pine Bluff. But literally, the central office for the Pine Bluff School District is like three minutes um, away from the Dollarway buildings, if you're familiar with that side of town. And, um, and this is the case with Pine Bluff as well, uh, the greater Pine Bluff, but basically Pine Bluff and Dollarway are just right there on one another's lines. So when you provide services, when you provide supports, be it uh, civil supports or other auxiliary, um, the Department of Human Services or what have you, you do have to make a decision to do the same thing twice. 
and, um, and do very similar things twice. And so, and similar we are, as similar as we are, we find that we have a lot of transient uh, students who kind of bounce back and forth. And oftentimes we have to make a lot of decisions together and do a lot of planning together anyway, because often we're dealing with the same students. But as was mentioned with uh, Go For It Pine Bluff, uh, Think Mayor Washington's perspective has been shared at, at different points. There are so many things that we do now um, in duplicate that it has been expressed. It would be easier, um, and not even just a fiscal piece, but it would be easier if we could provide, coordinate, and connect services. I should share with you that there have been times over the years that the Dalloway School District um, sometimes would be left out of some pieces. And I don't think it was uh, just a, a, a huge negative effort, but there are many people, even in that area, who are still not clear about the fact that they're not the same district and that we have the number of districts that we have in that community area. So it has been, um, you have to even acclimate people who come to provide services to the fact that you're not dealing with the same people. You even get calls from time to time of people who are looking for um, administrators related to their students to find, well, they're actually in the other district. And that's prior to even this year. So yes, sir, there is a, uh, there's some common footprints, common um, services, common needs. And, and for a long time, long, long time, we just work together. We just work together. Thank you for being here today. I have a few questions. First, um, so we do have students that reside not in Pine Bluff city limits that are north of the river. Um, and actually that number was smaller than I expected it to be. With it, I think what we have was 94 in Alzheimer and 17 north of that. Do you have, um, in working with those communities, are you, what are you hearing from them? So while it is um, smaller than of course, than it, than it was, um, it's a huge percentage of the little over 900 students who mm -hmm. were, who were in, in the Dalloway School District. We have talked more with the, um, the leaders of those communities when we've had stakeholder meetings and, and conversations and opportunities. And um, to be honest with you, all timer still feels such concern mm -hmm. over the last combining. And the expressions that I'll say their mayor shares and then other community members that I may be connected to, be it church or otherwise, they just share, they don't want that to happen again. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to, it to happen that they're left out and they don't want it to be that the concerns or issues that they have are not raised. I've not heard um, anything per se that was, we would prefer this versus that because there's also a sense that it's gonna happen or whatever does happen and our voice might not be as loud. And that's why it was really important to me when I had the opportunity to collaborate um, with Ms. Smith and Ms. Whitlow and of course uh, Secretary Key that it happened in a way where their voices were heard and an opportunity to speak, to connect, to be a part of the process where the only one person was or not, that that was made available because at another time in um, specifically the communities north of us, north of the river, when it happened before, they just kind of woke up and that's where it was. I can't speak to every event. Mm -hmm. I'm not, um, it's not an indictment on anybody who was in leadership at the time, but that's what that community has shared and has shared every opportunity they get. That makes sense. I think because of that, their, their past, it will certainly take a, a lot a more conversations as, as we go down this road. Um, kind of shifting gears from that, we've talked a lot about dollar waste fiscal state. What about Pine Bluff? I don't know if the department has any data on that or you just want to speak in general about Pine Bluff's budget and overall fiscal state. I can speak generally. Um, Pine Bluff, over a very brief amount of time under Dr. O's leadership, did some great things when it came down to, to impacting the fiscal footprint, reducing, um, reducing their budget by a great amount. Um, and you all can correct me, those numbers might not be quite <laughs> accurate for me, but I'm like millions of dollars. And that was done with a uh, reduction of force and closure and sale of buildings and a variety of, of things that impact the efficiency of the Pine Bluff School District. So fiscally, 
the district's uh, definitely in a much better place than, than it had been. And then, like I say, just, just a short time ago, major strides were made to do that. So we did, in Dollar Way, you're operating three campuses, is that correct? Yes, How many campuses are there in Pine Bluff? There are six campuses in Pine Bluff, and that includes a pre-K center. Okay, so how many elementary, what's the breakdown of that? Mm, the breakdown for, there are about 1,800 to, well, a little over 800, I'm going to say about 900 high school students. There are about 180 pre-K students, and I'm, I apologize, I didn't have that information okay. for you. There are roughly elementary students, um, it's a little under a thousand, and then the balance would be would be Jack Roby, okay. um, as those three elementary campuses are are operating. One's a little bit larger than the rest, but a little over 400, and then um, so we're around 300 or so for the other two. Okay, mm -hmm. I can get better numbers for you. Well, and, and they actually gave us because I think I asked last meeting about the pre-K numbers that mm -hmm. I was very surprised that it looks like there's a lot of open slots in all the pre-k centers in the county is that because of covid or is that typical yes ma'am okay <laughs> absolutely okay and so i i expect i hope whatever post-covid looks like those numbers would be go up again oh yes uh both both dollar Way and pine bluff have robust um pre-k programs and um yes it's definitely due to covid is there um in kindergarten in both districts is it enrollment down this year or has it changed kindergarten did have a little uh, uptick but it's it's the numbers have uh, held pretty decent over kindergarten okay okay thank you oh you're welcome thank you i have a, a question um i noticed that there was a pinecrest technical school at one time in the dollar way district. Can you talk a little bit about why that school was closed? We're seeing more districts come to us asking for a conversion charter to, to kind of have a school, a technical school. I'm just curious about that. So, so actually that was not a technical school. Um, Pinecrest was one of the other great centers several years ago. But what was the Pinecrest Technical School was uh, what's Sea Arc now. And so at one point you, you had that. So we, we have a Jefferson Area Technical Career Center that all of the districts in Jefferson County um, consort to provide CTE programming to students. But that was actually one of the grade centers in the Dollaway School District that was closed uh, quite a while ago. Okay, all right. Good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Warren, I, I know you've been giving, giving thought to what possibilities might, might happen from all of this. Have you given any thought to what innovations that might, um, because of the funding from the casino and uh, the uh, funding that would come uh, possibly from a consolidation or annexation, have you given any thought to what possible uh, innovations might come from this as an opportunity? Yes, um, more from the, the place of just getting excited about possibilities for the entire community. Um, so the funds from the casino, as it was mentioned, will, you know, by and large, support the Palmer School District as they are in their, uh, in their um, tax zone. When we think about innovation, it's hard not to get excited because you, and then when you're, when I support both districts, I think about what maybe one district has that could benefit or even ask the question, oh my, if we had this here or that. So there have been conversations about um, innovation. There have been conversations about, you know, virtual academies. There have been conversations about magnet um, school settings. There have been conversations about conversion charters. There's just, but it's of course just conversations, but yes, we, we talked a great deal about how we could, you know, use innovative ways to, to really do some things in Pine Bluff that's never been done. So yes. What, what impact do you think that would have on um, academics for both um, Dollarway and Pine Bluff? 
because I, I think that's that's probably our our at one of my biggest concerns is what's the impact going to be on students and their academics and their their opportunities to for the future to be prepared as, as they leave high school one of the immediate things that I know if we don't do something for Dalloway we won't be able to afford to do more than we're doing and even now with what we do um, we are at the point where we would have to cut services and cut teaching opportunities that actually are already at what I saw in somebody's comments bare bones we already don't have the the layers of support and services I mean you know we meet the the standards and in some areas we've done some things that we're really proud of but to be able to go beyond Dollaway would not be able to so it'd be a, it'd have a very negative impact if we don't do something major soon for Dollaway for the community at large we have the the opportunity depending on the direction of course you go to look back and see what we have in in both places that maybe the other needs and of course the fiscal benefits people sometimes um, think that well we're talking about teaching and learning so we can't talk about fiscal but one of our greatest barriers and and huge to recruitment and retention is that we don't pay people as much as they can get going right down the street so fiscal becomes the dividing line for the quality educator and the quality administrators that you get it makes a huge difference so off the bat one huge thing that we would have to do is invest in how much we pay people we will have to incentivize working under those conditions because by the way although it's phenomenal uh, family wonderful great they're tough tough conditions and especially without the appropriate services so it have a huge impact when it comes down to being able to recruit retain and even incentivize to get the um, to get the other persons on board that you really really need both of the districts are um, at different stages but close stages with the professional learning um, communities at work process and I'm a huge fan huge huge component it's the right direction for I think any school district you know not just just our school districts but it's the right direction and we are working along those lines when you partner the efforts and especially some of the persons that you have on both sides of the of the line when it comes down to the two districts it will just create I think synergy be in a position to improve and to increase the work um, and just to just to be able to go deeper in there while if it's not handled well or if the next steps for either district or combine or what have you whatever the case some major changes have to happen I think in both districts for us to be able to meet the needs academically that we need to meet I'm sorry we can't hear Quita Can you start over, Quita? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Sorry. Um, one of the things that's been discussed is that if this happens either uh, through annexation or consolidation, there would have to be a reduction in staff. What strategy are you going to use to, to um, bring the best staff to whatever results from this? First phase to me is looking internally at making certain that everybody's on the right, in the right seat on, on the bus and there are gaps now in both districts uh, be it openings or situations where people are doing many jobs versus let's say the one or two jobs that they normally would so internally making certain that efficiency is met and that again the right people are in place and the combining of some tasks and some pieces one of the things that um, actually done this year is 
in collaboration, which is something that we could have done and would have done, because I think the relationships among the districts have been great. But we always talk about, hey, do you have one of these? Because we need this. And so with choir, uh, I'm sorry, not with choir, with band and with orchestra, we've been able to do that. Um, one of the district leaders in the Palmer School District is providing support in Dalloway, where we have some gaps. That's not a strange thing to, uh, to do already. But it'd be that type of thing that you would make certain, you make certain, you know, that efficiency and again, the best people are in place to do the work. We have uh, situations which you, which you know well. To meet standards, you have to have all of these offerings. And we have to offer them separately in both places where we may be able to just with the one take care of that need for both districts because of the numbers perhaps in those particular sections. So. Internal efficiency, internal uh, placement, to me is a phase one. I, I dream about and think now that if certain decisions are made, it'd be possible to have a very robust recruitment and re uh, retention plan that ties to it incentives and the fiscal benefits that need to come to make our districts competitive not only with uh, internal to our community, but with communities abroad. Often people come, and I'll use Dalloway as this example, often people come and enjoy themselves and connect, and they don't leave because they leave in Dalloway. They leave because the opportunities, you know, within just minutes um, were so much better, or the opportunities in the community at large for their spouse may have dried up or there may be some challenge or some need that is not being met by where they are fiscally. So uh, a robust opportunity to recruit and to retain and to incentivize uh, teaching in our area because it takes a whole lot more to do what we have to do in our community education-wise than it may in some other areas. That would be my hope and plan. <clears throat> Dr. Warren, some states have really seen uh, an improvement in student learning by combining and having a K-8 school. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that as far as combining Matthews Elementary and the Moorhead Middle School there in Dalloway. So I, I have um, heard and read some research to the same. I am a proponent of community schools in that um, your littlest ones need to, to live as close as they can to the schools that they attend. Specific to Robert Moorhead and to James Matthews, right now the numbers would not support that in respect to the enrollment and to the capacity those buildings have. Um, I definitely think that K-8 as a concept for sure is, uh, is one that could be and, and I'm sure would be if numbers continued to, um, to decrease. And I am, like I say, a proponent of especially K-8 elementary students and middle students being near their, uh, their buildings. Is there any opportunity to possibly have a pre-K center which would you know, give you more space at that school? Or? So um, I think you're peeking at my uh, at the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, James Matthews having a pre-K center with the, with the four classrooms that we have there, one of the things that I would see um, if everything worked well and all approvals were in place would be to move those classrooms to the, um, the pre-K center that is dedicated to pre-K work. And, and, and yes, that would be a, a major consideration. Thank you for that. Do, does either district in that case enroll pre-K three or any ages below that? So um, just pre-K four. Yes, yes, um, two, two went up, and at one time Dalloway did have a toddlers uh, program, huh. an infant and toddlers program. And are those pre-K four teachers on the same pay scale as the K twelve teachers? They are. Good. Thank you. That was really important to us. Do you have partnerships involved in your pre-K programs? Yes, we do. Um, our early childhood 
Special Ed services are uh, provided through the consortium effort through our um, through um, ARESC, and of course they're uh, ABC funded, and we um, have program uh, components that are DHS supported, and we connect with the um, the other early childhood um, area supports and services. Very rich. Um, you know, very, very rich programming and collaboratives uh, among both the pre-K programs, both Dalloway and Palm Bluff. Great, okay, thank you. Ms. Newton, you had asked earlier about, you know, possible innovations and in that. Yeah, I, I think one of the opportunities that we have here is with the partnership with the tribe uh, and the casino operations, not necessarily the casino itself, but they have a, um, another, a number of ancillary operations. If you look at what they have done with the downstream, it's the Quapaws have the downstream casino and resort, and they um, have established their own uh, bison and cattle farm. And it's my understanding that they're looking at replicating some of that, uh, maybe not the full-blown operation, but if you think about the area of, of Pine Bluff, you think about UAPB and their expertise in uh, fisheries, uh, you look at just ag science in general and the opportunities that uh, are possibly there with some of these partnerships. Um, there are some of those things that really would be appealing that could keep kids and families uh, you know, from wanting to go somewhere else. I mean, if, if, if a Pine Bluff Dollarway district had, you know, could, could tout that we have the only partnership on, in these areas and, and, and give kids the opportunity to really be a part of that, um, I, I think that's, you know, looking out obviously in the, the crystal ball, but you know, 21, 22, 23, those are things that uh, are going to come on board in some, uh, fashion uh, locally as a result of the casino. I think they also have farming operations. I'm not sure. I mean, but uh, my, my reading of what they do with their restaurants is they really try to source locally. They try to source uh, uh, their own uh, vegetables, you name it. I mean, whatever they cook in their kitchens, they try to make sure that it's uh, uh, available from their farming operations. You know, that's not innovative. That's just taking advantage of, of the opportunities that are there and putting students in a, uh, a situation where they're going to see and they're going to learn some things. They're going to get exposed to agriculture science. They're going to get ex exposed to uh, the, you know, fishery sciences, all of those things. And, and really that's some of the, the beauty of the opportunities that are out there. Now, again, it's hard for us because there are certain local ac actions that have to take place for that to happen. But I think in our, you know, what we're looking at from the department standpoint and what I look at from the decision the state board needs to make is what do we do? And uh, we've said this before with uh, other state takeover districts that we're getting ready to, to turn back. What can we do that gives them the best opportunity for success moving forward? And, uh, and that's just you know, some of the context that I think is out there locally uh, that we need to keep in mind and find ways that we can help encourage that and, and facilitate that if possible. I think that's kind of my mindset on this is, is instead of trying to look at, and I know because of my history with small schools, the, the um, negative um, viewpoints that, that can come from that, but you know, we can think of this as an, a, an opportunity to impact students' lives for the positive, to make sure they're prepared for what what would be real life after in jobs and, and being able to support a family and, and uh, go on and, and um, make an impact on, not only on their family, but then in the future on the community. And then that cycle of the community improving, I think, uh, can start to happen. So. You know, I'm trying to look at it from the positive as an opportunity rather than trying to focus on negative. If it's appropriate to comment, um, Secretary Key, there are a variety of different uh, entities who are waiting on the districts 
to have the type of um, continuity of operations where they can get a foothold to support. And so, we're, you know, we're really excited about those types of opportunities, like you mentioned, um, with the casino, the hospitality, you know, industry and the uh, programs of study that are starting in our local colleges. We have University of Arkansas Palm Bluff, outstanding STEM program and fisheries, like you talked about in Agri. Agri is not big in that area, but, but look at Palm Bluff. And so the why behind why it's not is something that we have to answer. But there are different partnerships that are waiting to bloom um, that we often feel a stigma from, well, you know, what are y'all going to do? You know, where there may be the question about what's going to happen in those districts or what will, and, and almost sometimes like people are waiting till decisions are made to decide how they'll invest. And um, it, it causes some uncertainty when it's not clear what the next steps are going to be. I'm very happy that, of course, our education partners, uh, P12, the, um, like I said, the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, CARC is, is working in partnership um, with us directly related to a middle college concept and trying to make certain that that's on board. We want students to graduate with their associates. And, um, and beyond, we want them to be in positions where those opportunities like we're talking about are, are in place. Continuity is a benefit for that. And so uh, there are some opportunities, like you said. I, I, I would be remiss not to tell you that, that there are a lot of heartstrings tied to all this um, with the community operating, you know, literally four school districts forever, for, for as long as they have. And the thought that there would be some loss, some loss of, um, some loss is, is disconcerting, um, most definitely. But what we have to embrace is what is it that we need to do to make certain that we position our students to have the very best opportunities possible? What do we need to do to make certain that our teachers have access to the resources and that they can focus on teaching and learning and our administrators the same? So I love what you said about the positive, because um, there, there are barriers and, and concerns, but I think that the people that we have in the room and the, the partners that we have and even the untapped partnerships, I think together we can do a new thing that could do and make for very good, new, positive things for students. Ms. Horn, you know, we, we touched this morning on, and we did at the last meeting, but, you know, the, the difficulty that we've had in uh, getting uh, participation, you know, and, and you, you mentioned the low participation, but you also mentioned that you don't have a shortage of people who are wanting to love on oh, yes. both districts. All right, so it's, uh, and I understand that. I mean. It, it's a lot easier to put yourself out there uh, when you think you know you're having a direct impact on students or teachers and you're going to be engaged in that that's exciting and, and it, the heart can get into that the heart is it's hard to get the heart into having a zoom meeting to provide feedback in a public setting and and you know we know that I mean that's been our experience here uh, for a long time uh, so I'm not as concerned about the, the community involvement from that standpoint. I do wonder if you could give us your insight on um, how long do you think, I mean, are we, we thinking maybe a year, two years? I mean, at what point do you think there might be a, a level of readiness for engagement in, uh, you know, either a, an appointed board, an elected board, that, that sort of thing, uh, based on the conversations you've been having in the community? So and the readiness of the school, because there's also that element, uh, and I'm sorry to, to, to add to it, but the, the readiness of the work that you're doing in the school uh, of taking two districts that have been in difficult places and moving them to better places, and then the layer of a local control element. Yes, sir. So a very loaded question, sir. And um, I'm happy to answer it. One of the things that I've tried to be, um, and you all have positioned me to be able to do so, and that is that's transparent and direct. Um, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to do that. 
it's not a matter of not having persons in the community who are ready to help govern and lead. It's not a matter of that. Um, now, I won't say that our numbers are as high all over, that you have pockets of people, pockets of professionals who live in some areas, pockets of, of uh, persons who, who may not be. And um, so I don't, it's not a matter of, of my saying that my community doesn't have um, an adequate number of people to govern and support. And you might say I feel this way because it's me, uh, but we often have people very concerned about local, about local control, very concerned. And I really think it's tied to the climate of what's just going on in the world, the uh, challenges that uh, local districts have had. And so I do think there are people who are ready. I do think there are people who are ready who do a whole lot of stuff already. They're on a whole bunch of boards. They are very engaged and connected to a lot of things. And the time and opportunity to, to do another thing could even be a challenge. So when you say the amount of time, I think the best opportunity when you do something new anyway uh, is to prepare for it. And so to me, uh, I think that we would we would need to position ourselves to give everybody in the community an opportunity for, uh, for courses or workshops connected to governance and what the roles look like, um, as well as maybe special appointed persons who are targeted to provide those types of supports and that type of work. I don't have a good answer for the how long, but I will say when I look out at the timeline for the Palm Bluff School District, for um, the hope that we will do what we need to do to exit earlier than that, but we know that um, with the timeline, we're in the department's care till 2023. A time where we map out a trajectory for, again, supporting the entire community, because that'd be a benefit everywhere. People serve on a lot of boards in all kinds of places, but where we, you know, maybe, maybe ask for some, some leadership from our, uh, from DESI Department of Ed, ASBA, to provide support in general throughout the community. And then, like I say, those targeted persons, that timeline is going to go really fast of just a couple of few years. I'm not comfortable saying, oh, we'll be ready next year, but I think that there are people who can be ready to be trained and to be prepared, you know, as early as in a year. What makes this really loaded is this next thing I'm gonna say. And that is, this is a hard job. <laughs> I'm happy to do it, happy to do it. I feel like I'm supposed to do it. I feel like I'm uniquely qualified. Um, and not necessarily I'm the best person to do it, but you know, I know a couple of things about this and what's going on in this area. I know one day someone who, is, uh, who has a whole lot more than I've got and who knows a lot more than I know but what I see potentially my role as being, sir, is to get it situated for the next level. And that's going to mean reducing the distractions as much as possible. And please don't take it ugly, anyone listening, um, for me to say that local support is a distraction. Local support is not a distraction. But if there's another layer of governance that requires a huge amount of attention of the administrators, the teachers, uh, the families, and even of the supporters who come around us, then it will be even harder to do this very hard work that we have to do. So I just would ask that there would be a time where there would not be, whether I'm at the helm or whether I would not be, that there would be a time when the department the school or schools are still in the care of the department so that that level of distraction, because um, to do that well and to serve a board the way you need to serve them and give them the information they need and to position them to make the decisions they need to make, that's a work. And it's an honorable work. And it's one that I want our school districts to be in a position to do one day. I would just say we're not there yet to be able to do that. Maybe not so much if the community can't, but I don't think the districts is even yet where it needs to be to, uh, to provide and do and to collaborate as it needs to. So it would be an ask to me that, that a year or more, uh, 
especially for a new landscape, that the district not have that other work to do. Yes, sir. Ms. Smith, I don't, I don't want to be redundant, but I do want to be redundant to something that uh, Secretary Key said. Superintendent Warren, we are so lucky to have you in that role. Uh, and, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if we could start a CTE thing on cloning, we'd start with Ms. Warren, wouldn't we? <laughs> she's, she's pretty good. Um, okay, so are there any other questions or, or points? Um, one thing that, that I, I do want to just kind of piggy, piggyback on what a lot of you were talking about, about projecting for the future and innovations and ideas and things to come, um, that is a role that we see ourselves at OCSS that, that's part of our job to also do, is not only should we be creating an action plan about how to get the district out of state takeover, but we should be creating an action plan on what their future is going to look like. And so with whatever decision is made, um, at the December 10th board meeting, um, from that point, and, this, and Ms. Warren and Sheila and I, we've all talked about this frequently, what's next? You know, what are the community partnerships? Um, you know, and is that the way to start bringing in the community to start actively being involved on the what's next part? Maybe they're not the appointed board at this point, but maybe they're the working committee on pre-K or the working committee on you know, community pathways or mental health supports, and we start we start there with those working groups. And so I think there's there's roles there. Um, Dee, I wish you would have worn the shirt with the zebra and the cardinal sitting on it. Um, there are people in Dollarway who walk around with t-shirts and bags, and there's a coffee mug. I think she has one that literally has the Pine Bluff zebra with the Dollarway cardinal sitting on the head. And so while this is an emotional decision. Um, there are lots of things going in the right direction, and there are a lot of people. Do you have it? All, do you have it? Look at this, yeah. Two if districts. I may, this yeah. was actually a gift when I was first uh, named that um, persons at one of the schools, they got together and, like you said, made shirts, coffee mugs. It was so overwhelming for me. Um, I was so amazed. Dollar Way was so supportive. They were excited for me. They were excited that I'd have this opportunity. And um, like I say, literally members said, it says two districts, uh, one leader, Barbara J. Warren, Pamela Strong. I, I didn't do this, y'all. I didn't do this, but yes. So there, there is momentum with some type of annexation or consolidation. Um, and there are advantages and disadvantages to all the scenarios we've paved out. Um, I am just going to say again on the part as far as the department looking at it and looking at the incentive fundings, looking at some type of identity still remaining within an annexation. Um, we do think that's probably the, the direction we'd encourage you to look at and ask questions. I am available for any of you at any if you want to individually sit down and talk or have questions about something. I'm more than happy to do that with you. Um, Ms. Dean, do you have anything else today that you need to ask or for me to cover? see if legal can help us with this one of the options that uh, has been laid out for the board is uh, the keeping open the dollar way campuses and given the feedback um, you know mrs warren was you know talked about the all-timer situation and and all that i would i wonder if legal could uh, give us some give the board a sense of if Part of their action was to say annexation, um, but leaving the campuses open for a period of time or operating for a period of time. Uh, if if y'all could talk about you know what those options might be, what what are the board's limitations, uh, if any, with respect to uh, those those type of operational questions. Lori Frino, is this the right microphone, guys? Lori Frino, Department of Education. There are, I mean, there are options. 
there are options for that type of thing. Um, wait, I lost my train of thought. Could you help me? I'm sorry. Just, just, just give you a scenario. Real small. Well, I'm going to give you a scenario and you say, so, mm -hmm. so if the board wanted to say, okay, we, um, uh, you know, we would approve annexation of the two districts of uh, Dollarway into Pine Bluff District uh, with the stipulation that the Dollarway campuses remain open for X period of years. Yes. Just as a, just kind of throwing that out there, Thank not you. as a recommendation, uh, but just as a thought point for y'all. Yeah, and that's, that certainly would be allowed. The state board has a lot of authority when it comes to annexations and consolidations. So they, the state board certainly could do something like that. You know, when you look back, if you look back at all the different annexations and consolidations that took place, something I thought was very interesting was oftentimes there was an annexation, but they adopted both names. You know, a campus was left open in Wiener and a campus was left open in Harrisburg and they both kept their own mascots. I mean, that's something I think that's important to remember is the state board does have a broad authority when it is making decisions concerning annexations and consolidations. I recall Emerson, Taylor, Bradley used to be Emerson and Taylor and Bradley and over the years I don't think it all happened at the same time. No, I think that over was another years. one. It was Emerson Taylor and then Bradley annexed. So now it's Emerson Taylor Bradley. Right. And we have, I mean, there are several, there were several annexations where, yeah. where the name actually changed. And I guess the, the difference sometimes is that the, the, um, the state board has approved annexations or consolidations, but has uh, left the decisions uh, on campuses, you know, whether they keep them open or not to a local board. But in this case, a unique case that we were saying, potentially annexation to another state takeover district, then that decision making still resides in the board. So then that helps give uh, a little more um, authority, I guess, or, or understanding that they, this, the board has more uh, can be more specific in their order, I guess. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that authority would li lies both with the board and it would lie with the new administration of the new school district, but certainly it would lie with the board if that's what the board so chose. Mm -hmm. I have a lingering question. So, and I, I don't know who it's for, but um, when we look at the incentive funding for the annexation consolidation, is there strings attached with that money? What can that money be spent on? Well, my understanding is that that is unrestricted funds. That is very generally, um, you know, the, the, the legislation gave great flexibility to districts to cover <clears throat> excuse me cover costs that would be associated with the annexation or consolidation process uh, it is it is an incentive that was established to try and um, alleviate some of the concerns that, that you've heard voiced or concerns that we've experienced in arkansas for the last nearly 20 years well over 20 years since the first round of consolidation that uh, modern consolidations in 1983, I think. Uh, so, but it's it's very um, uns it's, it's not very specific on how that money can be used. Would there be a way, um, you know, I, mean, I don't think it could be before next month, but to make sure that money is spent, not just um, folded into the budget, treated like anything else, but treated truly to benefit the community because of this annexation if that makes sense if that i don't think that would fall under the, the the board's authority to do that but i can guarantee you that we would work very closely with our finance uh, fiscal support office uh, mrs warren and the fiscal team at the district level to make sure that it didn't just become uh, absorbed mm -hmm. and used as uh, a way to prop the normal up until you know well, you wouldn't want to do that because then you wouldn't have it in three years and then exactly yeah. we wouldn't we would want to to make sure that this the, over the 
the two year period that this money was available, that it would be used um, in, in a way that and helps prepare the district for future success. I just, I'm going to keep coming back to that. I mean, every decision would have to be made in the context of what, what are we doing to make sure this district has uh, potential for longer term success. So, so I'm, as I'm thinking about um, annexation consolidation, that would be another plus on the annexation side because we would have a little bit of our department would have say so in that money, but if we went consolidation, that would be up to the local district and local board. Yes, with consolidation, you'd be creating a brand new district that would have a, a, a birth date as of whatever date y'all set, uh, probably July 1, and then it would uh, you know, have its own governance structure and everything else that would be developed. And, and currently, so with annexation, they, um, Palm Bluff School District is considered fiscal distress. And so working with the fiscal distress office continuing, we could set up with its own source code for those funds and we could track over the years how those funds were utilized. But that could only be done through annexation? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So I'm going to correct all spelling errors <laughs> on all documents and we'll make sure they get on the state board agenda. Um, but other than that, I think we are, we are done. So just. Okay. Well, I know it's been a while since we've had a work session and, and this is a little more formal than some of those work sessions that we've had in the past. But, you know, um, maybe, yeah, I don't know if, it's up to y'all, but if there's any further discussion, informal discussion that y'all want to have and with the board members too, we could let our, our friends, um, at West Ed. yeah, they, they could, they could go so they don't have to uh, stay on with us and move on to other things, but there may be some other questions that y'all want to come back and discuss, uh, or just general conversation about it. But, uh, we will keep the team, our team here, uh, to support that. And um, and keep everything running, you know, until y'all say you you've exhausted the questions that you have today. So. So again, thank you for to our West Ed team, Jason, Felicia, Kalisha, Lauren, I mean Camilla. All you guys are on there, so we appreciate you, and thanks for all the efforts and the work that you do. You did. We appreciate you. So say that if there's more information or something specific y'all want us to bring to uh, the the December board meeting relative to this, uh, I think this would be a good time for y'all to ask us or, or discuss what it would be. I, was, I think I think I appreciate the questions we asked last session were all sent in a document and answered for us. One lingering thing we didn't discuss um, was school-based health centers, and I saw where Dollarway has it, maybe a, a volunteer informal one that's something that I certainly want to continue to be on the table looking forward at time bluff um, especially with the hospital there and what kind of partnerships um, y'all could get there and I don't know if this would need to be a question that would need to be researched or, or you know looking at budget and, and, and projections along that sort of thing but what would be a, a reasonable time to, if we said keep the Dollarway campus open, what would be a, a reasonable time to, and also thinking about the conditions of the buildings and, and, and enrollments and that sort of thing, would it be three years, five years beyond that, what would be the, the time taking all of those things into consideration where we don't just pull a, name, a number out of the hat? No, that's a good question, uh, and I don't think we would have the answer for that now. I think um, certainly much of that would depend on uh, the staffing levels that would be required. Um, you know, if, if you think about just strict operations now, um, you know, the savings that is potentially there through consolidated transportation, consolidated food service, uh, you know, whatever those support functions are in the district um, but direct instruction I think it would take um, a little bit 
to see, okay, what, uh, you know, and it, we'd have to base it on some assumptions of are we going to say static uh, student enrollment? Or are we going to uh, base it on, you know, the, a, a similar decline? I mean, at some point, we would really love to get to that point where we come back and say, we see this <clears throat> an avenue here that the, the decline would, the student enrollment decline would stem, be stemmed. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But uh, we can work on that. Beyond doing just a, a timeline, if, if you, maybe if there was some type of, um, while the Pine Bluff School District is under state authority, any closure of any campus would need to come to State Board of Education for approval. So it doesn't bind us by, if something happens in a year and we need to do it, we would be coming to the State Board to give you the information so that a decision could be made to do it instead of just having an absolute. And so that would take us to 2023. That um, having visited the campuses pre-COVID, I know um, because of certain challenges y'all face, um, you have high school students taking virtual courses at your high school pre-COVID because you couldn't find teachers. So I would be hesitant to put numbers on things before an inventory. And I, I know you serving both roles now, you're, you're doing that, but before a, an inventory is, is taken of what is, what is going on in the district, what is needed, um, and moving from there, I'm certainly a proponent of small high schools, but also see the combined effort of a larger high school with um, new facilities more career tech programs and that sort of thing. Stacy, would you, can you turn your Zoom on there? Um, Dan reminded, just go back up there. Okay, thank you. Do I need to repeat what I said? So what, well, I was making a comment to the question um, Ms. Newton uh, talked about, about timeline, about instead of maybe just saying a timeline, if we just said under um, school, no school closures unless approved by the state board while the school remains under state authority, and that would take you to 2023, but it would not keep some, a, clo a closure from happening if it needed to occur. Um, and plus, I think that there's, uh, Ms. Warren could, could speak to this in the future if needed, but the, the campuses on Dollarway are, are outstanding campuses. There are some out, very solid buildings. It may not be a, a Dollarway campus that closes. It might be a different building somewhere else or um, movement of offices or things like that. So that, I think it's, a, it's much broader than just Dollarway campuses. Another question along that line. Uh, I know you said 2023. Are we talking January 2023, December? November. November, OK. So if y'all would will recall um, the Dollarway High School, the old Dollarway High School campus, we, we moved those students out of there several years ago um, because the facility, there was a much better facility available. And so the three buildings that they are in now are, um, it, it, we don't have facility problems there. I mean, I, we do have the issue with, what do we do with the old high school? Um, but that's been with us for a couple of years now. Another thing that I would like information on, and I know Ms. Warren touched on it, but I, I, I would really like a little bit more specifics is thinking about reduction in, in force. Are, are we talking about uh, non-certified, certified, uh, uh, you know, about how many positions are we, are we talking about as far as, you know, you can't give specifics for something that's gonna happen year from now as far as uh, force, but, but just kind of a, a little bit more specific on, on what you're anticipating on having to reduce as far as staff. That might be something the board would consider um, requesting in their quarterly reports okay. is the, the plan for, um, you know, any type of reduction in force or the plan. Um, so something like that, maybe under that reporting structure. Okay. That might be something the way to address that. Okay. If you look on the annexation page on that gray part where it talks about your decision points, the, if you kind of make your notes on that box, um, things that might be paired there, and then um, if we get to a point where um, you want to 
visit individually with one of the attorneys or with me or somebody, we can talk through some of those. Looking at that gray area, I see that it says, when will changes begin to occur? And there's two different dates, January 1st and July 1st. Um, could someone speak to that a little bit? So again, <laughs> trying to help guide, but choice and what, what makes logical sense. So when we talked about when the state board makes a decision, it can be immediate, it could be, but it has to be done in legislation by July 1 or any other time. So we in house talking, um, the idea of it being immediate January 10th or being immediate starting in January 1 could be a possible option. So the district would go ahead and begin um, making those changes and adjustments starting January 1. Or it could be July 1. Are there pros and cons for those two choices? Um, some of the, okay, so some of the pros is, for example, um, the business um, manager for Pine Bluff School District has, um, his last day is in December, and so everybody's kind of on a hold to see kind of what happens to decide what we're going to do for January. You know, is that a position that needs to be filled? Is that a position that could be consolidated? Is that, so if there was a um, January 1 consolidation, then we could go ahead and maybe start moving and making plan, you know, intentionally putting people in the right seat and, and making some adjustments we could also begin looking in the spring about adjusting salary i mean it wouldn't be full-fledged you know but they could maybe do some small things that would probably be something too i'd, I'd follow up with um finding is it, it would that be a nightmare mid-year no okay legal nightmare mid-year would that Anybody concerned about that? Okay. And it would allow yeah. the district to begin operating as one. I mean, we would just start having to. Yeah, I guess if, if I'm sitting in the perspective of a student or parent, what would change? If that decision was made for January 1, what would change for me? And it seems like at that point in time, nothing would change. You know, you're still at your school. You still have your same teachers. Teachers on their be, same contract. Yeah, it would be structurally it would contracts, be, money, funding. Okay going to ask would, would we have to reissue contracts to the dollar way staff since as of whatever date the board set that that would be part of the pine bluff district that's a good question we and i don't know if, if, the, it, if it was immediate to january one then dollar way staff would then fall underneath the pay scale for pine bluff is that correct Comment, Come on up, Miss Warren. Yeah. Here up there, could you share if there is a difference in the pay scales and what it is, just for information purposes? There is a, a difference in the pay scale, um, five hundred dollar difference at base, but there are differences as you go over in the range. Um, I think Dollarways, Masters level, there's there are variations there, and so. It'd be better if I got you good information related to that, but there are some variations. Which one being lower? Um, I know. So, so Dollarway is lower in, in, in most range okay. areas, but where Pine Bluff pulls away is that the step increase is, is higher at Pine Bluff. Okay. So there would be variations. Okay, because I know you've worked hard to increase dollar ways. Absolutely. But and, and that's why we're just a few hundred dollars away with the base. Okay. Speaking to the, um, the possibilities, so um, as Ms. Smith was talking about January, she's, you know, we do have a major decision to make and um, we've been problem solving around that. One of the considerations related to July is related to what you all just asked, uh, uh, Secretary Key, related to contracts. And so um, there, are, there are a lot of, there are several pros and several cons. I, I don't, I don't know, of course, exactly all of the implications, and there are a lot of conversations, um, but that would be a huge thing to consider, the, the changes and the shifts that would have to happen for just a semester. Um, so off the top of my head, I think there may be fewer, um, fewer cons for July 1. 
in my it's just in my thinking. Just uh, mm -hmm. thanks for letting me say that. I guess I will ask a question. So I, I think what I said has done a great job of, of attempting to facilitate conversations. I know I'll go forward Pine Bluff has as well. If at whatever point in time our decision is made, will we, um, I, I know the ownership is largely on the district, but will the department continue to provide support to the district to communicate with parents and families about what the changes, what, what the decision was, what the changes may or may not be? To, to work with families, particularly those north of the river that do have those long-standing concerns. Yeah, so the Office of Coordinated Support and Service, we would directly work with Ms. Warren and the administrative staff in creating a communication plan for the okay. district. I'm, I'm looking at the questions that, that this survey gave us that, that the public had asked. It says, if Dollarway becomes part of Pine Bluff, how will the naming of the district building and athletic teams work? You know, I, whether we like it or not, that's a big deal to communities. How will that work? So if the Dollarway High School remains, campus remains open right now, I would foresee that the campus would still remain their mascot and their football team and yeah. their athletics. It'd be like Little Rock open. has Central High Tigers. You have, you know, all, all the... Park you Patriots. I mean, it wouldn't be any different. Okay. Yeah. And then I, the zoning question, um, we wouldn't have to address that now, but at the time that Palm Bluff released, then would we have say so in zones, how many zones, and where they would be? That would have to be considered at that point because you're, you're looking at a district whose geography has changed considerably. Uh, before it's returned to local control, so yes. Okay, that would be at that particular time. Okay. One thing um, Ms. Smith up here reminded me was because of the fiscal class, the rules changed, and so even after getting off fiscal distress, you, there's still three years of reporting to the department, and so that would impact the districts too to maintain their financial viability moving forward. Well, if I understand it too, it'll be two cities kind of merging in on this as well. Have we, how is that, how will that work? I can't seem to get my head around that. Uh, Ms. McFetridge, it's one city. It's this, there is not a city of Dollar Way. Uh, but so there are, it, within the geographic boundaries of Dollar Way, you have Alzheimer, which is a, a separate city. You have which which one is Wabasika? Okay, so you have you have four cities that are uh, uh, covered by the uh, in the rural what we call the rural area of Dollarway, but then you have the city of Pine Bluff, which uh, Dollarway shares part of the city of Pine Bluff with uh, Pine Bluff School District. So really, there's no merger or anything of the cities in the greater Pine Bluff area. I know we talked about at our last meeting the bus routes and how that would be affected with annexation. If we kept the Dollarway schools open, do the same bus routes 
continue as well so that we don't have kids on a bus for hours a day. Yeah, so in that last presentation, that bus information that was presented was presented in a manner of for the most significant savings, you know, so if we talk about minimal, moderate, significant savings, um, it, it was presented as, as a significant. So if you were going to try to, you know, look at the budget. So if the Dollarway campus is remaining open, I would assume probably the same bus routes would probably, there, there could be an opportunity to consolidate some buses and some routes and make some adjustments. Um, but I don't believe that the Miss Warren or the Dollarway School District anticipates students being on a bus for the, as long as that was previously presented. That might be okay in California, but not here in Arkansas, right? <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll blame that on the Californian that was presenting, and he's not on Zoom anymore, so he doesn't know it's being said. Thank you, know, um, no matter what the decision is made, Ms. Warren and the district have a lot of challenges in the future with so many students being online virtual this year in your districts. Um, what that looks like when, when they do return to campuses um, and in the meantime. However, we can um, eliminate a road, bu road bumps for you so that you can focus on delivering the best instruction to those students um, is what I keep thinking about. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the January 1, July 1 thing again. Could could y'all research that a little bit more thoroughly yes. and actually come back maybe with a recommendation for that? Yes. That would be very helpful because yes. rather than this just peaking a day it's without mud, It's muddy right now. Yeah, we can go back and, and try to bring some of those questions up about contract and, what, and talk to some of the other finance folks and just other things that we maybe haven't thought about. Okay, thank you. Stacy, regarding the, uh, the establishing of a, an appointed board, does that decision have to be made at the same time as the decision of annexation, if that were the direction we went in? So if you do annexation, um, it could resume under the commissioner as the appointed board for Palm Bluff. If you made the recommendation for an appointed board, then we'd be looking at doing an appointed board for the Palm Bluff School District. But that decision, or I should yeah. say, but that decision can be made at the onset or could be made later on as we have maybe more facts at hand in terms of the opportunity. So when you make the decision for annexation, you could make it where the um, decision was to re remain under the commissioner and then in a future date come back and we could talk about an appointed board at another time. May be bold. Does the commissioner have a point of view? Well, I think Mrs. Warren gave us a pretty good um, rundown of, of her view on that question and just the uh, the opportunity that in something that is going to be so new, um, not looking at that for the first year. And I would certainly. Uh, concur with with her assessment of that uh, it would be very difficult um, I think to just try to start with an appointed board at the same time uh, you, you're looking at a, um, a merger of this magnitude but I also think that in the um, uh, 
you know, in the absence of appointing a board, I think setting a schedule of, of as Mrs. Warren mentioned, using DESE staff and school board association staff to start having um, training sessions, if you will, uh, where members of the community can come and learn what it means to be a, a board member. You know, what are the roles? What are the duties? What are the responsibilities? Uh, you know, where, where are the lines? You know, where, where does the superintendent have the uh, authority to run the district versus uh, the policy setting of, of the board. So uh, I think, you know, looking at some period of time which, uh, in which that can be done to begin paving the way for uh, a uh, either appointed, elected, you know, whatever the board would decide uh, at some point in the future, uh, having a plan. I mean, Ms. Kaufman talks about this all the time. You know, you, you give folks a plan and you, you don't keep them, they don't feel like they're in the dark. And uh, so I think if, if we could move into over the next uh, few months uh, developing that plan so the community can see very clearly uh, this year is this adjustment and transition year and then you know, what does year two look like and how does that relate to eventually what we all hope which is a fully elected school board operating uh, as, as uh, most other school district in the state in the state and the nation. So I hope that helps, Ms. Chambers. Uh, what, would that be possibly, that's what you really recommended, can you appoint advisory board? I mean, just for that communication purposes? I think for the, um, for the purpose, when we changed the statute a few years ago in 2017, we removed that language about a community advisory board um, and replaced it with the, the idea of a of a board that could either be elected or appointed with limited authority. So this board could put whatever limitations uh, or grant whatever authority they wanted that board to exert. So you know, uh, I think many times we've talked about this gradual release model. Uh, so that's really what we'd be talking about um, in, instead of just having a figurehead board or anything like that. It would, it would grow into its role depending on where you all thought they were ready to, to take the right steps. And I think to echo her position, what she needs to, to make the decisions that she needs to make right now, but I think the communication to your community is invaluable to, to garner that support when that team effort comes back together because you will need some help, some support for what you're doing. And, and I think, you know, to communicate that is, 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 is valuable, even though you, you do need to be able to make those decisions, you know, it, it immediately uh, in, and oftentimes. But, but I, I understand where you're going. Secretary Key, I couldn't find my mute button fast enough. I just wanted to thank you. I completely agree with what you represented, and it seems exactly the right approach to align with what, with what Ms. Warren had said she needs, where, she, where her focus could best be given. Ms. Warren, are there any students that live closer to the Dollarway campus that are currently going to Palm Bluff and maybe vice versa where uh, those, those students might uh, end up going to Dollarway at that campus to maybe increase those those numbers at Dollarway. So when the uh, zone changes are taken into consideration, there are a lot of opportunities for exactly that. So yes, ma'am. I mean, just so close and and some concentrations. I mean, literally across the street from one another many opportunities for that type of thing. So this could be a way that we might um, slow down or stem the the uh, declining enrollment in the dollar way buildings themselves and potentially balance yes okay from a standpoint of balancing there's some major possibilities okay. I, I would just caution though that it wouldn't be a net uh, change or, or benefit on the the funding part because we'd be looking at it as the entire district but I think for the types of, of program uh, programmatic and academic offerings that could be made obviously uh, more high school students gives you more opportunity to 
do more things. So. I was just thinking about the, the likelihood of being able to keep a Dollarway campus open in the future rather than thinking, you know, having to think about that that building may close at some point. But if we could move kids there and, and provide opportunities to where it would be, uh, you know, a, a positive thing to go to the Dollarway campus, then that might be, be a way that we could keep Dollarway Cardinals still going. ask a process question uh, of the board just for your opinion of, of this process uh, this is considerably different than what we have done in the past with respect to our state takeover uh, in the discussions of, of you know how to resolve uh, at the end of what we do with the districts um, and you don't have to answer this now but I would ask you to think about uh, what part of this process did you like? What part did you not like? What could be better? Uh, personally, I think it's a, a overall much better process to help you all get the right information to make the informed decision. And I credit uh, Stacy, Ivy, legal team, I mean, a lot of people, the finance team, a lot of people put a lot of work into this, OCSS, Mrs. Warren. Um, you know, I, I, I like what we have created here. I would ask you all to help us refine it and make it better. So any thoughts that you have on um, the process itself, please let us know in the coming weeks and months uh, so that we can, um, you know, as other districts come up and we need to have these conversations, we can give you the, the best possible information and the best possible process uh, for making decisions. I will say um, I think it was quite a benefit to have a third party to come in, an, an objective um, point of view to, to, um, to get data from the community and feedback from the community. I think that um, allowed us just to be objective and to step back and look and see what other eyes um, see and um, allowed the community I think to feel better about the process as well with having a third a third party come in so um, a phenomenal job I think this was this so far has been a, a great process um, and has been extremely helpful very informative to have all the information um, so much information laid out for us to, to make the best decision possible so thank you to the team and everyone that was involved in this process because it's it's been very helpful. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, do we have any more questions or a request for information from anyone? Then I think we are done. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, team. Um, we will adjourn, and I will, we'll see you all on December 10th. And lunch.